You remember this campaign trail moment? And now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Ah, oh, I don't remember. That was Donald Trump, as you probably recall, making fun of New York Times reporter Serge Kovaleski, who has a congenital joint condition, not exactly a moral highlight. But the issue was addressed at the Democratic National Convention by a young woman with incredible grace. 56 million Americans with disabilities so often feel invisible. I fear the day we elect a president who defines being American in the narrowest possible terms who shouts, bullies, and profits off of vulnerable Americans. Donald Trump has shown us who he really is. And I honestly feel bad for anyone with that much hate in their heart. That, of course, is Anastasia Somoza, who's been a disability rights advocate since she was just nine years old. She's one of many people in that community who've spoken out in recent weeks. Another is writer and actress Marianne Leone, whose recent piece in The Globe was titled Donald Trump Doesn't Have a Clue About My Son. She's also the author of a terrific book called Jesse, A Mother's Story About the Life and Loss of Her Son. Marianne joins me now. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, I understand the feeling. Well, I understand as best I can, as you expressed in your piece, which was terrific. Why did you decide to write about it? Um, you know, I just, I am a rageaholic, as I said in my book, <laughs> and, uh, and after seeing Anastasia, where my husband and I were both just blubbering and weeping, tears of pride and joy to watch her, I thought, I'm going to use my ability to write to speak out, and I, I, I actually, I'm pleased to see people with disabilities speaking out for themselves, and I hope sometime you'll have someone with a disability on speaking about Crip the Vote, which is, uh, what impact do you think Anastasia had on the world? I think it was a huge impact. Do you? And I'm, I'm thrilled. Because you want it to be or because you really think it No, I be? know it because she's been calling me and saying, well, I'm getting all these offers to write books and so. You mentioned in your piece that you know the family and yes. you've known a long time, you know her mother. And you talk about when you developed a relationship with her mother, you joined the tribe is the term used. Yes. Do those of us who aren't in the tribe ever really get it and know what, life is like for either Anastasia or for you and Chris, your husband? Do we get it or no? I'll tell you what makes people get it. Inclusion. Inclusion makes people get it. I told a story about Jesse. Um, we took Jesse to Prague when Chris was shooting The Born Identity. Mm -hmm. and Chris Cooper's your husband, a wildly talented actor, I'm sure people know, but just in case. They anyway, uh, Chris, uh, Jesse kept a journal because uh, he was he does his he did his work by a computer. And on the way back, we could get nowhere in the Paris airport. It was je suis désolé everywhere we looked because everything was broken down. So Jesse wrote about that. And uh, the, what happened was Chris got so angry, he pushed the wheelchair uh, onto an escalator. We didn't realize there were barriers at the top. Everyone was screaming. Jesse was laughing. But the teacher said, they want to hold the Olympics in Paris. What would you do about this? To whom would you write a letter? So we have the letters the kids wrote. And they were everything from, Dear Mr. Bush, do you know what happened to my friend Jesse Cooper? Mm -hmm. But the thing that got to me was they said, what about elderly people? What about people with children in strollers? So now you've got a bunch of 11-year-olds thinking about community. There's where the importance is. You know, for those who are sitting at home, and I know this happens a lot in this horrible political environment, well, obviously she's not crazy about Donald Trump. You wrote a piece, I think roughly seven years ago, about a guy <laughs> who's a Democrat who made a bit of a misstep himself. Who, who was that guy? That was Obama, who and I supported. He, he made a, a not great remark about the Special Olympics. and uh, Saying his bowling, his bowling was so yeah, horrible, his yeah. life was in the Special Olympics. And you, know, and you took worked, him to task. And I did, because I'm equal opportunity, butt kicker. <laughs> you know, you mentioned a minute ago, uh, Jesse, and some of the stuff he wrote. I don't know if this is okay without giving a heads up. There's a poem he wrote. Speaking of, you know, Anastasia talking about he doesn't see me, there's a poem he wrote that's in your book, if you don't right. mind. Do you mind reading it? Do you mind doing this? Okay. I should have asked you, I know, but <laughs> could you read it? He wrote this when he was about 12 on his computer. Mm. I am always, I'm sometimes tough. I'm sometimes heroic. I'm sometimes tough. I'm always, I'm always brave. I'm always tough. I am sometimes invisible. I'm always brave, heroic. I'm always, I'm sometimes brave. And sometimes I'm always tough. Oh my God. How hard is it to even talk about? I mean, your, your kid died in 2005, and I know you and your husband have become disability advocates. You've worked hard for kids with spe special needs. Is it still hard a decade later to talk about this? The grief never goes away, but I, 
I actually feel like talking about him is an important thing because I, I want people to understand what advoca advocacy is for your child. It's 11 years later, uh, there are roughly one in five, I learned this at the convention actually, one in five people in America have some disability, roughly three million kids, school age kids have some disability. Are things dramatically better today than they were in 2005? I think that you have to keep fighting for those same rights. That's the problem. I mean, uh, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act has never been fully funded. Mm -hmm. Never. I think that the one good thing coming out of the orange excrescences remarks is that people are discussing disability more in this election than ever before. And I think that's a really good thing if people are now talking about disability. So Trump's not a setback, but an opportunity? Is in that one sense, I mean, you know... <laughs> It's horrifying, but at the same time, people are talking about disability, and I'm really glad to hear it. I want to hear what, mm -hmm. I mean, Hillary Clinton, who I am with and have been with, has been backing the sorts of things that I am behind for a long time, for a long time. Aaron, it's great to see you. Your piece great was terrific. You. Thank and you so much. You're pretty terrific yourself.